In March 1932, foundations were in process of being prepared and erection work started a month or so later. When the Liverpool Paramount was constructed, further Paramounts were planned at Glasgow and Belfast. Nothing came of the Belfast project. In November 1939, Paramount began to book their films in conjunction with Odeon. However, the Paramount circuit was not finally sold to Odeon until 1956, when £1,850,000 pounds was paid for their seven cinemas. The Paramount Tottenham Court Road, London, was given a spectacular opening on February the 10th, 1936. The Paramount was the first 3,000-seater in the Tottenham Court Road, Euston district, and had taken nine months to erect on the site of the former Shulbred department store. The exterior had a cream trough-shaped canopy which extended the whole width of the Tottenham Court Road facade and some distance down the longer side elevation on University Street. Below the canopy, the facing was of polished, biscuit-coloured marble slabs with polished black marble trim. The marble base was continued on the side elevations in Portland stone. The tall cafe windows marking the entrance were flanked by fluted columns in blue faience with blue faience trim at the head. The general facing at this level was sand-faced, multicoloured bricks with a dark header here and there picked out half an inch from the face of the wall. Approaching the entrance, which curved round in a broad sweep, the double pay box in stainless steel with green glass panels stood outside, flanked on either side by three pairs of entrance doors. Having the pay box outside was an idea that came to this country from the United States, but was not generally popular. Beyond the vestibule, the entrance foyer was two storeys high, with a balustraded stairway running up one side to serve the balcony. The ceiling was treated as a deep coved silver panel, with a central pendant light fitting in green lacquered metal and frosted glass. Above the foyer and vestibule was the cafe lounge. In the auditorium, planned on the acoustically excellent broad fan shape, the pièce de résistance was the proscenium surround, which gave the impression of being remarkably near from any part of the house. There were 1,180 seats in the balcony and 1,965 in the stalls. The Paramount, which changed its name to Odeon in November 1946, closed on the 5th of March 1960 and was demolished. The seventh and last Paramount to be built was claimed to be the most beautiful and luxurious cinema in the Midlands, with quality and comfort as its keynote. The Paramount Theatre Birmingham opened on September the 4th, 1937, with 2,600 seats. Narrow entrance fronts often occur when cinemas are built on expensive city centre sites, and all that could be seen were the main entrance doors at ground level and a canopy extending over the pavement with nothing but an architectural feature above on which was the illuminated name of the theatre. Above the large ornamental canopy were a trio of ornamental pillars topped by the Paramount and later the Odeon sign. The facade used to have 2,500 feet of neon tubing and required 50 transformers. Planned on similar lines to the other provincial Paramount theatres, the Birmingham Paramount, too, was built from the designs of Verity and Beverly. A decorative feature of the Grand Foyer used to be the elaborate fibrous plaster ceiling, decorated in golden yellows, picked out in silver. The walls were decorated with pink, tinted and figured mirrors, relieved by decorative plaster panels. 
Illumination was provided by fibrous plaster lighting fittings. The interior had been planned in a restrained modern style, which combined intimacy with dignity. Until very recently, the interior presented largely the appearance it did in 1937. A drastic redecoration in the late 60s, the so-called Zing treatment, deprived it of the architectural effects on the anti-proscenium walls, as this area was covered with curtaining. But a number of original light fittings remained, and the cove lighting above the circle was still intact. The proscenium surround used to be formed by a rich fibrous plaster grille, which had an illuminated band on its leading edge. The anti-proscenium walls were moulded in fibrous plaster. Along the side walls were pilasters decorated with gold leaf and painted ornamental enrichments. The ceiling was broken by elaborate concealed lighting troughs, the huge main ceiling bay having a beautiful ornamental painted surround. Behind the stage were 12 dressing rooms capable of providing adequate accommodation for a company of 50 artists. On the left-hand side of the former orchestra pit was the console of the four-manual ten-rank Compton organ on a semi-revolving lift. The organ was originally fitted with Compton's patent electronic unit, the Mellotone. The two organ chambers were behind the curtaining on the left of the proscenium and it was also amplified on the right-hand side to give a fuller sound. Al Bollington was the first organist and Charles Smitten, the last resident full-time organist in 1951. When the theatre was given the Zing treatment in the late 60s, the orchestra pit was done away with and the organ console buried under a carpet slope that went straight from the stall's floor to stage level. Stage draperies included festooned front tableau curtains and pelmet, four complete sets of stage settings, each in gold satin, silver satin, black velour and peach velour. Stage lighting consisted of footlights, four battens, twelve floods, ten spots and four optical effect lanterns. The projection suite was on the roof above the circle. Original equipment consisted of simplex projectors, a slide lantern and four Stelmar spotlights. Western Electric Mirophonic Sound had been installed. Rank discontinued live concerts on July the 2nd, 1987, and this led to the pessimistic impression that a run-down procedure had started. Angry pop fans protested at the termination of live shows. When live concerts were discontinued, the Odeon returned to being a full-time cinema, and Steve Tovey played the Compton organ as part of the normal film programme. This made it the only Odeon theatre where an organ interlude was still to be experienced. This too has now ceased, as in November 1988, the pessimistic impressions were confirmed and the theatre is closed and is being converted into an eight-screen complex.